thank you this morning that our eyes can open. We thank you this morning that our mouth can open this morning. We thank you this morning that, oh God, our hands can move, our feet can move this morning. We thank you this morning, oh God, for our family this morning. We thank you this morning, oh God, for the door of the church to be open that we can come in. And now, Father God, as we come in this morning to minister this morning, through social media this morning, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We thank you that God, coronavirus does not have power over us. We thank you this morning, oh God, that you are greater. That you are God all by yourself. That you do what no man can do. This morning, oh God, I pray that Father, oh God, as we worship you, as we listen Lord God, you know about our devices that we are using this morning. I pray this morning that God, we will not forget who you are. I pray that Father God will not just go through the tradition. I pray this morning, oh God, that our worship this morning, oh God, will be acceptable in your sight. I pray this morning, oh God, that your living word this morning will penetrate us this morning. I pray this morning, O oh God, that your word this morning, O oh God, will transform us this morning. That your word this morning, O oh God, will soak us this morning. That your word this morning, O oh God, will dwell within us this morning. That your word this morning, that is living and active this morning, will resurrect us this morning. You are God who has all power. And you do what no man can do. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Now, Father, speak through this vessel. Speak, O oh God, to the nation. Speak, O oh God, to the community. Speak, O oh God, to our society. Speak, O oh God, to the churches. Speak, O oh God, to your sons and daughters. Speak this morning, O oh God. For God, when you speak it, O oh God, Things come into place this morning. Things come into order, O oh God. Where there is chaos, O oh God. When you speak, O oh God. Things begin to fall into place. Where there is sickness, Lord. When you speak, O oh God. Where there is virus or viruses, Lord. When you speak, O oh God. Those things vanish, O oh Lord. Because your word said by the mention of your name, Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And you are the able God. We bless you this morning and we glorify your name. We give you praise and we give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. For those of us, or those of you who are unable to gather together because of uh, the coronavirus, however you are able to gather together around your devices to hear the word of God. Everything else can shut down, but the word of God will never shut down. The word of God must continuously be preached. The word of God must continuously go forward. So this morning, we want to welcome you to Grace Divine Christian Church, the city of transformation, a place where we are helping people discover and fulfill their God-given destiny. I stand this morning on behalf of this great church, on behalf of this great leadership, on behalf of this great church, to say to those of us who are online this morning, to say welcome. Welcome to our worship service this morning. It is my prayer that this 
day, which is considered Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, will bring prosperity to you. I pray that this Sunday, that you will hear the word of God and the word of God will transform your life. We missed our family gathering. We missed us hugging each other. We missed dancing together and having a good time together. Uh, however, as it is at this present time, it is a time for us to develop ourselves. It is a time for us to nurture ourselves. It is a time for us to water our relationships. It is a time for us to get closer to God. It is also the time for us to pray together, our family as a whole. It is time for us to improve our prayer life. And so I come this morning again to remind us that on this Sunday, I pray that this Easter Sunday will bring encouragement to you and not bring discouragement to you. Because God is still God. This morning, I want to draw your attention quickly that if you are unable this morning, I encourage you this morning by supporting the ministry that we are involved with. It takes money to do ministry. So you can still pay your tithe and your offering by PayPal. And if it's not about that, you can also do also cash out and Zia as well. Those information will be placed later on for you to see after the word of God. But this morning, I want to draw your attention to the book of Mark. I want to bring your attention this morning to the book of Mark because the book of Mark is important for us. Mark chapter 16, and we are going to look at verses 1 to 8. Mark is in the New Testament. This morning, I prayed and I've been asking God to hold my emotion so that I can be able to explain what the living word of God says. So that we fully understand the word of God. So we'll turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. And I'm reading from the New King James Version, so mine may be different from yours. But it says, and now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And when they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? And but when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man called in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Verses 6 to 8. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter 
that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This morning, I briefly want to, I want to share with you this morning, death is defeated. I come this morning to share with us this morning on social media and everywhere else this morning, and those who will hear the word of God this morning, that death is defeated. You are not defeated, but death is defeated. Amen. I don't want you walking around thinking that you are defeated, but death is defeated. I want you to understand that if death is defeated, so is coronavirus. Coronavirus will be defeated. So I come to say to you that your trouble will be defeated. Yeah. If you will just trust in God, who is the living God, who is able to do all things. Yeah. On Friday, death thought he had a hold. Death thought that he had won the victory. Mm. But then realized that there was a Sunday morning that was coming. Yeah. I came this morning to tell someone who is discouraged because of this situation that you must understand that death is defeated. Yes, it is. You are not defeated. Mm -mm. If you feel that you are defeated, you are not defeated. But death is defeated. Allow me to take my time to explain to you this morning what I mean when I say death is defeated. The Bible says when the Sabbath had ended, or when the Sabbath had passed, the women did not go to the gravesite or did not go to the tomb until Sunday morning. Oh, that reminds me that they were locked up. They were locked down just like us today. They had to stay at home. Oh, somebody hearing me. Yeah. I said they had to stay at home just like us today. Yeah. We had to stay at home. We had to have social distancing. They stay at home. But when the Sabbath was over, I come this morning to say, but when the coronavirus is over, when these things are over, we must come out. I came this morning to tell somebody, your day of coming out is coming. Hallelujah. But you must understand that a time will come when you will get out. But don't be frustrated. Yes. The time is coming. Jesus Christ was in the grave until the time came for him to come out. You will come out of this thing. You will rise above this thing. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that COVID-19 will be defeated. I want you to know that you will overcome this thing because you are an overcomer. I want you to know this morning how you will come out of this will be the question. It's not just about coming out, but how am I going to come out? That is the question that we all must answer. Even as we are going through this, how will you come out of this situation? Will you come out wiser Will you come out stronger in your faith? Will you come out stronger in your prayer life? Will you come out of this time stronger? When we talk about resurrection, when you resurrect, you don't resurrect the way you went in. Is somebody hearing me this morning? Oh, I came this morning to tell someone, you went in faithless, but when you come out, you will come out faithful. You went in this well, you went in struggling. But when you come out, you need to come out stronger. Yes, Lord. I ask this morning. Community, when you come out of this coronavirus, how are you going to be? Church, when you come out, how are you going to come out? Because for some of us in the church, 
We went in with gossip. We went in with hatred. We went in with knowledge. We went in with so many other things. And we had to stay home. And social distancing. But when you come out of this thing, how are you going to come out? Are you going to come out wiser? Are you going to come out stronger? Are you going to come out better than when you went in? I come to say, are you going to come out infected or affected? Because in the midst of this, some of us will come out. But are you going to come out infected? And that is the question that we all must think about. It is time for you to do something because you will come out. While you are in the midst of this, I came this morning to say to you, you will resurrect just as Christ resurrected. You will come out of this thing. Coronavirus will be defeated. Your trouble will be defeated. Your calamity will be defeated. Your hardship will be defeated. The hardship is just for a moment. But the question that comes is, why am I in this hardship? Why am I going through this? Am I preparing? It is time for you to prepare. So that when I come out of this thing, my worship will be different than when I, I win it. That my worship will go to another level. That my church will go to another level. That my relationship will go to another level. That my fellowship of God will go to another level. That my prayer life will go to another level. But you got to prepare. You got to prepare. While you are by yourself. While you are doing the social distancing. While you are staying in your house. That's the time to prepare. The football player or the sports player, they have to practice and practice and practice before they get on the pitch for the actual game. You see, God put you in, us in a place where we need to begin to prepare. prepare. Yeah. We need to prepare because when we get out of this thing, folks are going to come to church. And when they come to church, we can't have church not the way we used to have church. Oh, no. We have to be prepared because there will be a time of a new church. There will be a time of a new era. Because now the church is resurrected. Just as Jesus was resurrected. If you notice, Brother Mark had said it was a whole Sabbath. Jesus stayed in a tomb for some time. You are staying in your social distancing for some time. But when you come out, how will you come out? How will you come out? Will you come out like the way you went in? Or will you be different? Some of you may have been in situations for a while. But I came to say you will come out. But when you come out or when you are resurrected, I just don't want you. So come out with infections. Because when you come out with infections, you are going to infect other people as well. You went in with hurts, you can't come out with hurts. You went in with bitterness, but you can't come out with bitterness. You see, when Jesus Christ was crucified, the blood was draining all upon him. The strategy all was on him. How but I remember because the scripture said the only thing that Jesus chose to turn was the nail print in his hand. All right. But the Bible didn't tell me that Jesus had to show the matches he took. You see, sometimes when you go into the, the way you come out, you should come out better than when you went in. Oh, yeah. I came this morning to tell someone. Oh, and if you look carefully. I'm diving into this because I want you to understand some truth. Jesus, when he was hung on the cross, the Bible listed these women who were with him or at the cross. They were at the cross when Jesus was hung on the cross. They walked when she, they took Jesus' body to the grave. And the Bible said then they went home. And in their mind, they 
we're going back on that Sunday morning. But can I tell somebody something here? Jesus is no longer in the grave. Jesus is no longer on the cross. So can I tell somebody, stop living in your past season. Jesus, when he was on the cross, they were there with him. And they took Jesus' body and led Jesus' body in the grave. Now they are going back to the grave when Jesus is no longer in the grave. Hey. I don't know if somebody understands this. You are in the coronavirus season. <laughs> but if you are not careful, the season will be over and you will still be living in your coronavirus season. Right, when everybody else have gotten out of the coronavirus season. Is somebody hearing me? Because you must understand this thing. Death is defeated. Yes. You are not defeated, so stop living a defeated life. Because once upon a time, you will find it in the scripture where the Bible said Jesus, who was dead, he used the word was. You see, now that you have become a child of God, you can no longer live like the world. Your season has changed. So you will learn to live according to the season that you find yourself in. The Bible says these women they were with him that Friday at the cross. Some of them visited and saw where Jesus' body was laid. And after seeing it, they went home. Right now, can I tell you something? Because on that Friday, they could not do anything at all. But they just stand and they just watch. And they just cry. There were nothing they could have done. At this present time, you yourself, there's nothing you can really do when your family members are infected. There's nothing else you can do but to just pray. To pray for them. To hope and pray that they come out better. But I come to say to you, this season will change. But when a season changed, my question to us, what are you going to do? When I talk about the season, this is what I mean. Over and over. Some of you right now, there's nothing you can do for your child. There's nothing you can do for your son. There's nothing you can do for your husband, your wife, and so on and so forth. But when this season is over, what are you going to do? Christ is risen. Christ is alive. So you must rise up. Death is defeated. So the power has shifted and the power has been placed into your hands. What are you going to do? Are you going to live freely? Are you going to serve the Lord when you come out of this thing? You can now go to the Lord personally. Before then, I couldn't go to the Lord personally. I had to go through a priest. But this time, I can go to the Lord myself. I can go to him boldly. I can go and have a talk with Jesus. Simply because Jesus Christ is risen. Because he led, I can face tomorrow. The Bible tells me that Mary Magdalene was one of those ladies who were there. Mary Magdalene was one of those ladies whom Jesus took seven demons out of her. She still remember what the Lord did for her. And so she was one of those who were there with Jesus. The Bible says they went to and no one